Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our eSports Gaming Your Way Through College panel. We have four Ethan, colleges. If, Ethan, if I could interrupt you briefly. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of housekeeping items with the, the group, if that's okay. I apologize. No, that is perfectly fine. I'm just a little excited. You go ahead. You're okay. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all West Virginia students sponsored by the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, wvacrao.org. I'd like to now turn it over to our presenters. Thank you so much for turning it over. Let's try this again. How about? Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our eSports Gaming Your Way Through College panel. We have four colleges represented today. West Virginia Wesleyan College, Randolph College, Glenville State College, and WVU Potomac State College. We do ask that you hold all your questions till to the end of the presentation so that we have a chance to get through this and so that we have the ability to make sure everybody gets their information out. First of all, we're going to start with what is eSports. The definition that we have here is it is the word that describes competitive organized video gaming at all levels, whether it be amateur, competitive, or collegiate. We're going to talk to you today about collegiate. Stepping into our first college, if we can, page through here. Having some technical difficulties, just one. Okay, just give me one second, Ethan. For some reason, it's not changing. Hold on. Uh, you're good. Uh, as esports is a technology-based <laughs> environment, we all know that technical difficulties are prone to happen. And in esports, they happen a lot because you're always around computers and technology. And we're no we're no stranger to them at this point. Okay, first off, hi, I am Coach Ethan Hayes with West Virginia Wesleyan College. Uh, we were established in 18, oh, you're good, you're good to go through. We were established in 1890. Uh, our college is, our, our esports program wasn't, of course, but our college was. Uh, we are fairly old, we have a deep, rich history, and it is just a wonderful campus. Our esports lab is actually located in one of the older buildings, and it's a very historical campus. Uh, we are the first college in West Virginia to create an organized collegiate esports team, as in we have a an outside of a club organization or a student led body. We were the first to turn it into a sports team and start marketing. We are currently in our second year of competition. Uh, you can page through. Good chance. Uh, what we're looking for at the moment for athletes and competitors are uh, what I like to say, the, our five title upgrade, currently due to students graduating and we losing our, some, some of our student body due to moving on to bigger and better things after graduation, we are fielding two teams. We are fielding Valorant, and we are fielding Fortnite. Our Valorant team is currently 2-1 in our season and our Fortnite is competing in a ranked. So we don't really have bragging rights about that as of now, but we're working on it. Uh, as we're moving forward though, we look to pick up three more teams to bring us into five. The examples I have right here are the ones that I'm aiming for, which would be a League of Legends team, a Rocket League team, and a Call of Duty team. However, these are interchangeable and will be based solely on student interest. Uh, I have a philosophy of I don't want to put people into boxes of what they want to play. I want to find students who are interested and willing to put in an effort in a game that I will then support. Because of that, we've had interest in students becoming streamers and kind of pushing into a stream environment. And I believe that having a secondary source of income post-graduation is very important. And we are opening up uh, resources to teach and train students on the technology and the techniques that they need to become talented streamers. And so we are looking for competitive athletes as well as students interested in creating media through Twitch and other streaming platforms as we go on into the next semesters. 
what we have to offer for our students and our scholarships at the moment. We are able to offer one to three thousand dollars on eSports scholarships, and there are non-eSports scholarships at Wesleyan based on merit uh, signing. Like, oh, I forgot how to say. It. We have twenty thousand dollars plus of non-eSports related scholarships that students can apply for if they're worried about being able to financially afford college. We also have more than 40 majors and 40 minors uh, with a top-notch nursing school and a computer science program that is just absolutely amazing. We have some of the best computer science teachers I've ever met. We have a host of clubs ranging from marching band to board game club, if you really have it, and the variety of different fraternities and sororities you can be a part of. And we pride ourselves at Wesleyan having small personal class sizes, giving you the opportunity uh, to have the best possible class experience. Uh, I think the statistic at this moment is uh, 13 students to every one teacher, giving that close quarters, very personal uh, experience where you really are getting to like, n meet your professors and they are wanting to teach you because they know you. It's not kind of a faceless environment that I know can be kind of disheartening for some students. Uh, another thing that I like to say that we have to offer, and we got some pretty cool looking jerseys. Uh, this is an example of one of the jerseys that we have now. I like it a whole lot. And then, of course, we have all kinds of different things that we like to show pride in our school. We are uh, always making sure that somebody can have a jersey. They can have a place where they, they feel like they are representing something and a place where they're fitting in. And uh, we're looking to build that even further. We started out the first, and we're looking to be the best. Uh, you can page through if you'd like, Larry. Uh, if you've liked what you've heard, if you want to be a part of building out an esports team that means something that is very personal and is very down to earth, ready to get working, feel free to apply at wvwc.edu forward slash apply. Uh, that's the fastest way I can get you there. I urge anyone who's watching, anyone who watches back or is currently watching, apply to all of the colleges presented here today. Uh, you're never going to be hurting for applying to a college. There's always colleges that you need to, and you need to take the opportunity to like make sure that if you want to go to college, there is a college for you and you need to find them. And all of the colleges here are ready and willing to accept you. And I am really ready and willing to have you at Wesleyan because I want more people interested in esports and excited for esports. And that I will move on. We're next hail from Randolph College. All right. Hi, my name is Joy Parr McGrath, and I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at Randolph. We are located about four hours east of Charleston and about three, three and a half hours south of Washington, D.C. in the historic district of Lynchburg, Virginia. Some quick facts about Randolph. We are a small college with a diverse population of approximately 600 students. We've got about 31 states represented and about 22 countries. About 40% of our students are students of color. We did a tuition reset this year. So our total cost for room board and tuition is right around $36,000. And note that 100% of our students do receive financial aid, whether it's merit or need-based aid. Something that is really exciting that we, um, our professors did some research starting a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. We are changing starting in August 21, how we will, um, how many classes students will be taking. So our take two program will allow students to take two classes of intensive learning for seven weeks and then repeat that. So they'll have four classes for a semester. Um, our thought behind this is it is intensive learning. We feel like this is the best environment for our students um, to really gain the knowledge of the subjects that they're taking. Think of block scheduling in high school. That's why a lot of high schools have gone from the six or seven classes for the year to the four classes each semester. Wednesdays will not have class. That's the day to concentrate on community service, um, maybe go or participate 
participate in an athletic event or esports. Um, and about 50% of our student population are athletes. Maybe work on your internship or participate in our arts program. So Jordan will share with you more about our esports program. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so exactly. Take two will be perfect uh, fit for esports. Um, so a little bit about uh, Wildcat Esports here at Randolph College. We are a member school of NACE. So that's the National Association of Collegiate Esports. Um, so we compete through them spring and fall. So right now um, our NACE season is we're participating with Valorant and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, Smash being our largest esports team right now. We also are participating in Fortnite uh, with Play Versus and um, looking to fill out a roster in Rocket League. We also have a Apex Legends, NBA 2K, uh, FIFA, Madden, and Hearthstone crew uh, or team. So that's really excited, uh, exciting for us, but we are willing to support any title that students are looking to get into, anything that has a sustainable competitive scene, we wanna be there. So definitely look out for that. Um, we have academy level and varsity level, so all skill uh, levels are welcome. And we do a ton of content heavy um, sort of internal curriculum within the esports team in that we do uh, asset creation, streaming, shoutcasting, broadcasting, overlays, animations, um, pretty much anything in Adobe. And we are happy to facilitate that for our students. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the perks of esports is for our students that they can keep what they win. So we are happy to pay entrance fees to a lot of tournaments in addition to NACE, uh, TESPA, Collegiate Star League, and Play Versus. Um, and you get to keep what you win, so that's great, whether it's in the form of scholarship or swag from a company. Um, that's really cool. We have a super diverse team at Randolph College. About half of our esports team are female gamers, so that's really cool for us because it is not only consistent and representative of our uh, history as a former women's college, but uh, it also is where it should be for esports, and we're happy to have that safe environment and uh, kind of expand on that as we move forward. Um, so we also do study hall. We academics first for our esports students. So we, um, you know, create our our Discord server, our chat app there that we have um, been pretty much everybody. That's how we communicate. So we have a really good study hall group through there. Uh, we also do career prep, so we figure out where in tech or uh, gaming, marketing, media, writing, th where the crossover is for esports, and we'll kind of get you ready for that uh, when you graduate. So your esports time will not just be focused on competitive gaming, it'll be uh, serious skill building and using our connections in the Virginia, D.C. area that we've started to build here to sort of provide internship opportunities um, and we also bring in lots of guest speakers. You'll see a picture of uh, some of our Smash Bros students talking to MVD, one of the um, better Smash Bros players of, uh, of the last decade for sure. So we have all kinds of exciting opportunities there. Um, we do a paid alpha testing program uh, for our students that have sort of first come first serve uh, with AAA game titles uh, before they have to sign an NDA and everything. So that's really cool. And as Joy mentioned, 100% of our students at Randolph get some sort of financial aid. So it's absolutely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, we are just getting started. Uh, we're taking the time with COVID to sort of, um, you know, the silver lining in it being that we can delay the opening of our esports arena until the spring. So that means next gen everything instead of Moving forward with where we were in the 2070, 2080 graphics card, we'll be looking at 30 series at least, um, and then next gen consoles, so the Series X and PS5. So that's really cool. Um, there's also some perks for our esports students. If they need to do practice in their dorm, we can boost their internet up. Uh, and we also have like a really big esports community. So we do all kinds of events with our programming board, um, you know, Mario Kart tournaments. We do watch parties and launch parties for esports and gaming titles. So that's really cool. And of course, the esports apparel, um, we're partnered with Ritual Motion. So we get all kinds of swag and, uh, you know, cool stuff for our esports students. So, um, yeah, all kinds of stuff to check out. And then if on the next page here, if you just want to uh, take a screenshot with your phone or something like that, uh, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter. And uh, there's our uh, 
uh, Twitch there. We're always trying to live stream. Uh, we'll be doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. for our season here. And yeah, uh, everybody try out to or reach out to all these schools because uh, there's a place for everybody for sure. Thanks. Hey everybody, my name is Ricky Butler. I am an admissions counselor here at Glenville State College. We are located right in the heart of West Virginia. We are a small school. So um, our class sizes are about 18 to one, sometimes a little bit smaller. Um, and some of our programs that we're best known for is our education department, our criminal justice department, as well as our land resources department. So Moving along into esports, um, we've had many developments just in the past two years. Um, that's when it kind of came to light for us that we were going to be doing this thing. And then this is our first actual year of competitions. Um, so as far as recruitment goes, we really like to have our in-state kids who are interested, of course, um, but we recruit all over, even internationally um, for all of our athletic programs here at Glenville State. And we do offer scholarship opportunities. So that is one thing. At the end of this slide, you'll see our um, contact info for our coach. So if you're interested at all and you do want some um, financial aid or some scholarship, please reach out to him and then we can get you squared away there. Um, and some of the benefits of being an eSports player here at Glenville State College is that you'll be able to do something that you love within your comfort zone um, while doing um, academics as well. And then you'll learn some skills like teamwork, communication, work ethic, those kinds of things. And then as far as um, moving on into your um, future careers, you'll be able to do some things like webcasting and graphic design and video editing, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so a little bit about our program. As far as the eligibility requirements, we do require um, at least a 2.0 to, to play. And then you have some week, or weekly fitness requirements. We have some... Um, what am I trying to say? Uh, we have different weight weightlifting and yeah. fitness equipment inside the arena. Uh, I'm esports coordinator Logan Harrison, by the way. Nice to meet everybody. Uh, basically, within our arena, we have a small fitness area that we have set up so that our esports athletes have a place where they're able to work out without having to fight for machines with football players, with baseball players, things like that. Really just builds that comfort to uh, some people who are typically more of an inside type person. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about our program. We are a first year team uh, here at Glenville. Uh, we just, we're complete, completing our arena right now. It's a nearly 3000 square foot area. Uh, it's gonna be gorgeous when it's done. Uh, the PC area is kind of separate from everything else to where we can kind of keep that, that noise away. Within that PC area, we actually have 30 custom built gravity gaming PCs. If you haven't checked out Gravity Gaming, those guys are great. Uh, I've worked with them throughout this whole process and they've really helped us in completing our goals. Uh, in each of those PCs, they're uh, inside of an Inwin A1 mini tower. Uh, if you've never seen the mini towers, they're really neat. Uh, it's got a built-in Q charger on top of it. So you can throw your phone up and let her charge while you game. Uh, each computer runs AMD Ryzen inside with uh, 2080 Super Graphics cards. Uh, they just talked about at Randolph how they're updating to the 30 series. That's what we're hoping to do too uh, by next year, hopefully at that time period. Uh, we are also running HyperX keyboards, mouse, and headsets. I do have to say, you know, everything that we have together has really worked out really well, and I'm excited with how things are coming together. Uh, so for this season, the games that we're competing in, uh, we are actually currently field a team in Overwatch, Call of Duty, Rocket League, League of Legends, Rainbow Six Siege, Madden, 2K, Smite, Smash Brothers, and FIFA. Uh, so yeah, we have a full plate this year, and I've been lucky enough, you know, to field students in each of them where we can compete. Uh, we've already talked you know, a little bit about eligibility requirements. Really, it's just, you know, you get that 2.0 GPA, you get that 2.5 throughout the year to try to keep yourself eligible in that competition. I, I do require some study hall, whether you have straight A's or you have, you know, you're below the eligibility requirement. Uh, I have that so that I'm able to connect with the students a little bit more and really make sure you're getting your education together. Uh, we do play in uh, the National Association of Collegiate Esports, uh, just like uh, the other teams that will be mentioned throughout here. Um, throughout those teams, you know, we play these same local teams you just heard, and you can play Boise State, you can play Ohio State, Robert Morris. There's several really big time programs to really look forward to playing whenever you get in there. But 
really, you know, being affiliated with an e with esports is it's something great because it gives a lot of kids who typically just wouldn't hang out together a plant a chance to kind of collaborate, you know, get to know each other a little bit more. Uh, when you walk in to our gaming area, you know, you'll see kids who probably would have never talked to each other in any other circumstance because they didn't think they had anything in common. And that's been, you know, the biggest victory for us really is getting to see different types of students connect and, you know, moving forward and hopefully, you know, Pioneer Esports continues to grow and we grow into something fantastic that really sets us apart. Thank you guys. If you're interested, uh, please reach out. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Ricky, either one, and we'd be uh, more than happy to help you out with anything moving forward. If you have any questions, you can reach me at the number there below, email, or uh, we also have a Twitter at Pioneer Esports. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. And we also include, included our application and a free waiver code for that as well. Hi guys, my name is Coach Steger. Um, I am with West Virginia University Potomac State College. So we just finished up our first season. We are now entering our second season of our esports program and we have done a lot and we have accomplished a lot so far. So currently we compete in NACE, which is the National Association of Collegiate Esports and the ECAC was the Eastern College Athletic Conference. So we are a scholarship varsity team on our campus. We are within our athletics department. So think of a football team and we're exactly like them. So like all the other colleges, you probably heard them say that there's a grade requirement and they also do study hall. We do the same. So we like to make sure that we do study hall in case you guys are struggling with classes or maybe you think that you need a tutor or maybe you need to help someone. Um, we give you that hour block within our week, um, twice a week actually, to make sure that we can get you to help in the things that you need to succeed in the classroom. One of the biggest perks um, for coming to our college is that for our esports program, all the money that you make completely stays with you. Um, that is one cool thing that we like to offer because you put in the work and we want to make sure that you reap the benefits for it. With that, we have our own custom WVU gear. So if you look at the slide above you, this is our new gear that we released this year and that all comes free of charge. So once you're on our team, that is yours. On the back of it, it'll have your gamer tag and it'll also have your first and last name. So everyone on campus can know who you are, but at the same time, they're probably gonna be a little bit jealous because our esports team is really good and we like to make sure that we show it. In our arena, which you can see behind me and in the photo, we have personal customized iBuyPower PCs with our logo with 2080 Ti graphic cards and i9 processors. So everything to the latest and up to gear stuff. Um, with our program, we are super competitive, but we also like to have fun as well. So that comes from the broadcasting side where all of our players are allowed to stream within our arena because our computers are personalized to you. So normally no one will ever be on your computer unless some weird circumstance was to happen. With that, we like for you guys to bring in your own gear so that you can be set up within our arena, especially and um, to what your liking and comfort zone is. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk about a couple of our accomplishments that we just had. So in Rocket League in the ECAC last year, we were ranked number one in league and tournament play. Fortnite, we were ranked third in NACE. We're also ranked first in the Collegiate Star League and we finished 15th out of the national ranking in that. In Madden, we are ranked number one in league and tournament play for the ECAC. And this year, we had two of our Madden players qualify for the Redskins and the Baltimore Ravens club representatives. So they're gonna actually be fighting it out um, here within the next week or so to see which of them can be the club representative of those professional NFL teams. Our League of Legends team, every player finished in diamond one to higher. So most of our players that came in last year were plat three and we ranked them all the way up to diamond one to grandmaster. Um, with that, our coach for our League of Legends team is actually the ex-coach for Origin Gaming, um, which is a e, which is a European um, international uh, League of Legends league. So some of our notable wins, we have one over West Virginia University, which is our main campus. We won over Penn State, 
Temple, and George Mason, and we also have many more wins. So we have been featured on the front page of Twitch three times, and currently right now our Rock League team is ranked 10th in the EFU's um, National College Rock League rankings, which is really cool for us. Um, we like to showcase that we can do big things at our program, and we don't care, you know, your race, your gender, or what your ELO is. All we care about is that you come out here with the can-do attitude and a winning spirit, and our job is to help you get to your potential and what you want to be. So we are a great program, but also everyone that is in this call are a great program as well. So find your place, and we hope that all of us can make a home for you. All right. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. I will tell you that uh, uh, I'll say Josh has done an excellent job. Uh, we have been, uh, he's been an instant success on our campus, and we're very excited and very privileged to have him. And once I get to my presentation, I'm having technical difficulties, so I do apologize. But uh, we should be up here in just one. I would say my name is Larry Crook, and I am an admissions counselor with uh, West Virginia University Potomac State College. Uh, I've been working at the college now for several years. It's a place that I love. I'm an alumni, um, and I'm also an alumni of West Virginia University as well. Uh, but we are actually, uh, we're part of the West Virginia University system, so we are WVU. And what happens on our campus is you do get the best of both worlds. Uh, you get the big time un university feel, but on a small campus. Um, we have very small class sizes, um, but we have very dedicated professors that we provide a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, and you'll find this a lot very personalized on our campus as well. Uh, we are one of the most affordable four-year institutions in the, in the entire country. Uh, we only have about 1,300 students on our campus, so we are very small, and you kind of see that picture uh, kind of faded there into the background. It's a very beautiful campus, uh, especially right now in the fall, uh, very beautiful background. And uh, I can tell you that right now, you know, it's every student matters on our campus. Uh, very personalized, a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. Now, uh, I know that uh, Josh, you know, here has already talked about our esports program, which has been highly successful, but we do have 11 championship athletic programs uh, as well. Uh, our baseball team is top notch. Uh, I can tell you that Coach Little is already in the um, NJCA Hall of Fame. Uh, volleyball as well has been uh, to nationals twice in the last four years. Men's basketball has been there in the last three years. Our men's basketball program actually in NJCA Division II was ranked number one in the country five years or five, or five weeks uh, two years ago. So they've done very well. Uh, women's basketball program has been very successful as well. Um, so we have a lot of very successful athletic programs on our campus. And we are a very diverse campus. We have students from all over. We have international students. So even though we are small, we are a very uh, widespread campus. Now, uh, we do have some options that are available to our students. Uh, right now, uh, we have the Tour Guide Live, uh, which is available. That's uh, available uh, right now. It's Tuesday and Thursdays at uh, 5 p.m. It is available to our students. You can also schedule individual visits, whether it be a phone call, or a possible Zoom meeting. We also have Discover Days that are available, which is our version of Open House. So um, if you wanted to go ahead and take a, you know, a screenshot of this, uh, we do encourage you to reach out to us so we can get uh, the information that you need with you or to you. And one thing that's great is if you want to apply, we do not have an application fee at any time. So it is free to apply. It'll probably take you five minutes. And we, uh, we do have open admission. So we do not require ACT or SAT scores on our campus. Um, so that's something that's beneficial to you as well. Okay. And uh, once again, uh, this is just another way to kind of reach out to us at the go to PSC at mail.wvu.edu uh, email address. Um, also the phone number that is there is the best way to get in touch with the uh, admission staff uh, through uh, via phone uh, currently. Um, so we'd be happy to help you in any way possible. Now, with that being said, uh, we do have, uh, if anyone today, let me just check and see while I have everyone on here. Um, if we do have any questions, we have just a couple questions, I would say for everyone. 
And I'm going to ask that, uh, you know, for our whole um, panel here, that just if it suits your campus or you feel like, you know, you have a good uh, answer to this question, please feel free to, to go ahead and answer that for us. But the first question we have today is, is from a student. It says, do I have to be good at, to be on an esports team? I don't know who wants to jump in and go ahead and ask that or answer that question. I can take that question. I, I think the answer to that is no, because it's rather what you determine as good. So if you come in with a good attitude and you come in with respect and you come in with a passion to learn, then no, you do not have to be excellent or superb at your game um, because for esports is very inclusive and we want the people that want to be here rather than the people that think they deserve better or they are the best. Um, I will believe that with any coach that almost any player is coachable with those right attributes. So if let's say you're bronze and you want to hit um, diamond, then we have the abilities to help you get there. You just have to put in the time and the willingness to learn to get to that process. I, I couldn't agree more. If I could hop in and kind of confirm that. Oh, it appears I am frozen a little bit. Oh, there we go. Uh, skill is important in games. It helps you win. But at the same time, uh, skill is relative. You don't have to be top frag in a shooter game. You don't have to get the most kills to be the number one person. Sometimes just being a team player is enough to secure you a spot on the team. And more, more than anything, likability. If you're the best person at the game, but nobody wants to play with you, you can't win a team game. So just bring your attitude, bring your, like, like can do, and just try. If you try, and if you're there, and people want to spend time with you, and you put your effort into a video game, you can go far in, in any esport. Okay, we still have a couple more questions. Uh... So um, the next question I had was, can females do esports? Is the next question that has been labeled. Does anyone want to jump in there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, of course, the answer is uh, yes. Everybody, esports is probably the most equitable um, sort of comp competitive anything you'll find. Uh, but yeah, we we really want that to be sort of a focal point of our platform of, of esports moving forward. And I, most people that I talk to that are involved at this level want the same thing. We want an equitable uh, sport in throughout. And uh, we definitely, as I was mentioning earlier, um, half of our squad is our females. And honestly, it's, it's just not something that that even comes up as far as the, what there are, there, are there any barriers to entry? There's, there's none, as one of the other um, directors mentions. Um, you know, we don't care who you are or, or really what your sort of, uh, you know, what you identify as, what your views are. It's really an open community and um, bring a good attitude, as they mentioned. And, and even if you're having a bad day, bring that too, and we'll, we'll get you where you want to be in, in any game. Okay. Uh, okay, and we have one final question. Okay, I'm guessing just from reading this, this is from a parent. Uh, I'm, I'm giggling saying that. So if you're listening, a uh, little bit of humor for the presentation. But uh, I have someone that says, you know, esports, like, is this a real thing? And what is the benefits? Um, yeah, so this is definitely a real thing. This is one of the most up and coming and emerging programs in the world at the moment. If you are unsure, esports will be topping out views here shortly. Um, as of last year, League of Legends was League of Legends Worlds was the most popular view game right behind the Super Bowl. So that shows you how many people are really into this. Um, and as you can see with all of us college panelists, 
colleges are starting to look into esports, and we want those students to come to our schools and be a part of our programs um, because esports students are somewhat special and different in the nature of that this is something that they want. And for some of them, it was something deep down inside that they didn't want to show to other people. And sometimes they might have felt un like not accepted. And now we are opening our doors and letting them know that they have a place and they have a home and they have somewhere where they are viewed as something special. And that's what we like to think of esports. And if you think that it's not real just yet, just watch the amount of scholarship dollars that starts to come from programs across the country about getting your student, your kid to come to their program and be a part of something special. So yes, we're here, we're here to stay um, and you will see esports continue to grow here within the future. Okay, that appears to be our last question uh, for the day. But uh, I just want to take the time to thank everyone that uh, was listening here today. And we do appreciate uh, any, I would say, uh, please reach out to any of us. I want to thank uh, everyone that's involved in this panel, uh, all the representatives of West Virginia Wesleyan, uh, Randolph College, Glenville State College, and also um, WVU Potomac State College. And we want to thank you for listening today. And we really appreciate each and every one of you. We hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at wvacrao.org slash student access. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session's recordings at wvacrao.org slash student access. Thank you all so much and enjoy your day.